Welcome to lecture five. Not a long lecture, just like lecture four wasn't a long lecture. However, I wanted to break it up so that you could work on one segment at a time. Lecture five is the end of the Cold War. Um, it's basically that time when the United States and the Soviet realized that we're not really going to make any more ground than the other, so let's try to get along more so than fight each other. Uh, so within the Cold War, the majority of the reason for it, in our opinion, is because communism failed. Most communist countries were struggling by the 18, 1980s. They weren't able to feed their hungry. They didn't have jobs. They didn't have good housing. Um, shanties that became popular in the United States during the Depression were popular in some of these countries that were part of communism. A lot of economic failures, the, the political government failed because of corruption. They didn't treat their people very well. And with the dictatorship, people didn't have freedoms and people were seeing because of technology what was going on in other parts of the world. And quite honestly, communist countries wanted more of that freedom. They wanted to be able to talk and do what they wanted to do as long as it wasn't a violation of someone's rights. Like with our country, if you don't violate someone's rights, you're allowed to say pretty much whatever you want. Reform in the Soviet Union, 1985 to 1991. The leader at that time was Mikhail Gorbachev. Um, he was a leader of, who reformed the Soviet Union. Then you also had individuals who were working to make the government itself of the Soviet Union better. You had Perestikov whose restructuring of the Soviet economy and government allowed some private ownership and profit and created a Soviet parliament. Now this was pretty incredible since no one was allowed to have their own businesses under the communist control of the Soviet Union but now They've loosened up things a little bit. People were allowed to take control of their own piece of land. They were able to do with it what they wanted to. And they were able to try to better themselves and their family. Glasnost believed in openness of the government and freedom of speech. Allowed people to openly criticize or disagree with the government. This was huge. Because under prior administrations had this happened you'd been killed. We've talked about dictators and how anybody who wasn't with them was against them and anybody who was against them was the enemy and they destroyed their enemies. Um, now this is when self-determination came about for the people of Europe, Eastern Europe, because they could choose their own government. The Soviet military would no longer be used to keep communist governments of other nations in power. The Soviets basically had to stand down and allow people to run their countries their way without the assistance from the Soviet government. Um, this was a big blow for a lot of the communist countries that were seeking to uh, grow with the help of the Soviet Union because again they were no longer available to do it. They just couldn't afford to. They had too many things against them at that time including the United States. The collapse of communist governments. Well, a lot of changes came about which led to this. Changes in Europe, the anti-communist revolution began in Eastern Europe in 18, correction, 1989. The fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, which we've watched a video about, which was the event where then -pre U.S. President Ronald Reagan told Mikhail Gorbachev that the wall needed to come down and that we need to allow some unification in Germany. Germany is reunified under a democratic government, so the Soviets weren't able to stay in control. The Soviet Union actually broke up in 91, um, and this led to 15 countries being born out of that. And I refer to Russia quite a bit because that's the largest portion of what, the, what became of the Soviet Union. So there was a lot of things that took place, a lot of changes that happened, and a lot of restructuring of the landscape, I guess you could say.
Changes in China. All right. Mid-1980s, many people in China were unhappy with the ruling of the communist government, as they were everywhere. Nobody was happy with communism anymore. Everyone wanted to have a little bit of their own freedom. You can't have freedom if you've got communism, because communism and freedom, they don't, kinda, they don't work together. Um, one of the things that was most terrific was the Tiananmen Square massacre in 1989. There were hundreds of students who were pro-democracy demonstrators and they were massacred in Tiananmen Square by the Chinese military. The Chinese military did this as a, a last-ditch effort to show that communism was the way that they needed to go in China and that um, the only way to support communism was that everybody was on board. Uh, communism has re relaxed its communist economy policies, but it remains a totalitarian nation. There's still a single leader in charge, makes all the rules, governs the way China continues to be run. The next time we talk, we'll be talking with a new lecture series. Our new lecture series will be on the end of imperialism. Remember to use these video lectures as just a way of getting familiarized with information before you come in to class and we actually have a discussion. Remember to study daily, do some review, ask your que yourself the question, what's next? Come up with some questions and find answers to those questions. Thank you. We'll talk to you next time.